Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's the 22nd of October. It is a perfect day out. The fall color is coming in. It's nice and cool. And today we're going to go on a bike ride and shoot some Polaroids. I haven't shot Polaroids in a while, but uh, I've been wanting to uh, kind of go on this bike path that my wife and I have been riding pretty regularly for about a month now. And I've just wanted to bring my SX70 with me, shoot some Polaroids, and just make a little video out of it. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. Quick little pro tip, if you're out and about shooting Polaroids and you have your empty film cartridge, obviously don't be an ass, don't litter, but hang on to it and you can actually store your Polaroids as you're shooting in the old cartridge that is currently empty. So that way they don't get messed up in your pocket or your camera bag or anything like that. So keep that in mind. So while I'm out here, I'm gonna take a second to pay some bills and tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. You guys, I'm sure, are already aware what Squarespace is. They've been a sponsor of mine for a long time now, but I've been using their service for years, way before they ever decided to sponsor the channel, and it's a great way to build a website. They have everything all in one platform, so it's super easy to use. For me personally, it's been great to not only have a place to show off my portfolio, but also do other things like sell prints online. The season is starting to slow down now as the weather is going to get colder and colder here in Ohio, so print sales for me are always great during the winter, and I can do that directly through my website, which is super convenient. So if you want to try Squarespace out, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com, but if you want to get signed up, I can save you 10% off your first purchase if you go to squarespace.com slash mattday. So it's been a few days since I went out on my bike ride to shoot those Polaroids, which you're watching right now. But as I'm sitting here at the house editing this video, I realized that I don't have anything that I feel really makes this worth watching. I don't have any really useful tips that I went into while I was actually out on the ride. So I wanted to kind of just jump in here and add a little bit to it. While I was out there on the ride, I ended up FaceTiming Willem for a long time. And we just kind of talked about uh, nothing too secret or anything. We're just probably going to drop both of our photo channels and just merge into one channel and just do sort of a, a father and son blog. So that's, that's pretty exciting. But I was really just out enjoying my ride and shooting photos and taking the camera along with me. But I wanted to kind of talk about some of the more technical things that possibly can help you guys if you want to go out and shoot Polaroids yourself. Considering the Polaroid SX70 is a pretty much all automatic camera aside from focusing, you don't have a ton of control other than the exposure compensation based on the meter which sits right here in front of the camera. So most of the time, for me personally, I've found that underexposing Polaroid Originals film and the old Impossible Project film as well, I've pretty much always shot their film this way. I tend to always underexpose things because whenever things do get overexposed and blown out, it has this sort of like yellowish, creamy kind of tint to it, and it's just not really appealing to me. I just don't really like it. So I tend to underexpose pretty much all of my photos if I'm shooting out in daylight. So what I'll do is normally turn this little exposure compensation wheel either a quarter to a half a turn to the darkened side. And what that's going to do is basically let more light pass through this little meter right here because if you want to underexpose something you need to let the meter get more light so that way it's going to think it needs to speed up the shutter speed giving you a darker exposure. Now in some cases if I'm shooting anything kind of backlit 
that, for instance, one of the photos that I shot kind of into the trees as the sun was coming through, I turned it to the overexposure side because I wanted to compensate for that. And you can see in the photo, it didn't really work out exactly how I wanted. I do kind of like the result because it just has this really dark and moody kind of feel to it. But at the same time, I would have liked to have a little bit more shadow detail there. So for that photo, I turned it about halfway to the overexposure side, whereas I probably just should have turned it all the way there just because the light was coming in directly to the front of the camera, which is where the meter is. So just something to keep in mind if you're shooting backlit, you want to try and overexpose and compensate for that with the meter. But that's pretty much all the tips I can really give with the Polaroid SX70 if you're going to go out and shoot with it yourself. Um, there isn't a ton of control, but again, just using the exposure compensation, that definitely goes a long way. And honestly, it just comes with practice and getting to know how this meter really reads things, whether it be uh, a backlit situation or direct light on somebody. Just play around with it and experiment. And the more you shoot with it, the more you get used to it. But I've been using this camera for many, many years. So I've kind of figured out how that meter really handles things. But as you can see in some of these photos here, it still, uh, still tricks me every once in a while. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get back to the ride now. There is actually one more thing I would like to mention before we jump back to the video. And that is this bag that I'm using to keep everything in and attach to my bike. And that is the Peak Design Camera Cube. Um, they have a few different sizes of this. I didn't even know this existed until I was at Midwest Photo and I saw it and I instantly thought that would be perfect for my bike rack because the bike rack I was using before, it wasn't actually made for camera gear. It was just a general purpose bike rack. Whereas this is actually made for cameras, so I feel much better about putting all of my equipment in it and actually using it. And I've just attached it to this bike rack with some simple Velcro straps. Nothing fancy, they have some elastic to it. So that way you can actually pull it really tight and uh, keep it nice and secure. So I really like that about it, but this thing's perfect. I think it was like 50 bucks, but money well spent. It keeps my gear safe. And uh, Nora's gonna go ahead and climb on the bike now. So uh, yeah, Peak Design Camera Cube, some Velcro straps, and this is just some generic bike rack that I got from the bike shop. And uh, this works perfect. Another pro tip, keep your fingers out of this little spot here so that way they don't block the mirror as you're taking the shot. Also, I constantly have to lean my bike up against something because I still don't have a kickstand. I've had this bike for like a month, but why don't bikes come with kickstands? Is that is that for kids or, or is it not cool to have a kickstand anymore? What's I just want to set my bike down, but I have cameras inside. Well, this has been a really good time. I've only done about seven or eight miles, so it was a pretty short ride tonight, but I was basically just wanting to shoot until the sun started to go down, and it's just now going down over the hills back there, so it's probably about time to turn around and uh, head back to the truck, but I enjoyed myself tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the photos from what I've seen so far, because uh, this film does take a long time to develop. Uh, it's interesting. The color of the film has a lot more of a cooler tone than my last pack was, so, uh, which I've shot two packs tonight, and both of them have a similar kind of color tone to them. So uh, it's interesting to see, especially with all the warm colors of the leaves changing and everything. But uh, regardless, however the photos turn out, I'm not too worried about it. I just wanted to get out of the house and make some photos. And I hope maybe this video encouraged you to do the same. So uh, definitely let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments down below. And let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. But that's it for today. So I want to thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.